Hello and welcome to Daily Woodworks. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make an ammo box. Uh, this is my prototype that I built uh, for a friend of mine. It's going to be his birthday coming up in the next few weeks, so I decided to build him this. Um, this is made from a single uh, 1 by 12 by 6 foot piece of whiteboard pine. Um, it's pretty easy to make. There's some simple cuts on the table saw. I used my brad nailer and glue to hold it get together and just got some simple latches to hold it together, simple hinges and some stain and wipe on poly. Uh, it takes a couple hours to make and this particular box with hardware included cost about $30 in materials. I'm going to show you how I made it. Got a cut list here and we'll get started. I got this little tool at um, Sears, and it's marked Craftsman. I didn't know until I looked at that, but Craftsman's only available at Sears. Use this to set my height of my blade to three eighths of an inch. You just check and make sure that at your highest point, it still sits flat, and that's just barely touching that tip. Then you set up your fence right at. Um, about 9 sixteenths and that will cut a groove in your board so except the panel for the bottom at just the right depth and height. Now these three boards we just ripped, or this one board we ripped into three pieces is going to make up the lid. I'm going to use a biscuit joiner and clamps to join them together. And then once that's dry and I have the box built, I'll rip this to size. Now that I'm doing this for the second time, I realize that maybe it'd be better to actually cut your panels just a little bit long. That way you give yourself a little wiggle room as you do your glue up to not get it perfect. Um, I did not give myself that luxury. So to do this, I'm going to do three biscuits. So I'm just going to do a line about two inches in. I'm never going to see these, so it doesn't matter exactly where they're at. And then we want to do a secondary mark so we get these lined up. So I always do like a triangle, and then a circle or something like that, and whatever sign you want to do, gang sign, blood scripts, whatever, whatever is close your boat, just make a mark there so when you go to glue these up, you get them in the right spot. Okay, now have my boards clamped up, make sure to get them nice and even, and when I'm done, I'll start with 80 grit sandpaper to just take out any high or low spots and smooth this all up where it looks like one. Okay, we are now ready to assemble our box. This is a little, basically a big right angle that I made. Um, I can use it for a corner clamp. It's a little too big for that, but it serves what I need to do. I'm just going to take my board here and then find a 12 inch piece. And the way I designed it, I have the outside to overhang a little bit. So, the first thing I'm going to do is grab a clamp and just get it flush right here. And that's all that really needs to be done. So get it flush. And then this guy. I want to stand out from it the width of one of these boards because that's how I'm going to end up lining it up when I'm all said and done. So right there is good. Okay, for my inside dimensions, this is 12 and a half by 17 and a half. Basically, I just added a half an inch to my measurements, and that should fit in my slots with the work. I stand on the edges. After you get your box assembled, really before you sand it down, um, just line up your lid with 
in the back or front, it doesn't matter which one. But this part where I made this mistake, once I have it nice and even back here, I'm just going to scribe a line underneath, right there. And I'm just going to cut off this piece with my table saw and then it'll remove my mess up right here. Okay, I'm back. I gave the glue a good uh, two or three days to dry. Um, mainly just because I didn't have time to get out to my shop. Uh, one thing I forgot, as you can see here, um, this is a scrap cut off from that one board. I need to make four one inch by six inch strips to sit right here. Now I'm setting my fence up to one inch. And just pick the best edge and start. I'm just one inch strips. Okay, um, this is the same process with everything else. It is using, um, these are one inch by three quarters. They're gonna fit right here, and then I'm just gonna glue and nail these in place. start with the lid. Uh, my old t-shirt I've just folded into thirds and I fold it in half. The idea is to try to get a smooth edge thing like that. So I'm actually going to fold it in half again. To elevate this, I just took some scrap uh, plywood that I had sitting around and some drywall screws. And I ground the tip off the drywall screws so it wouldn't be too sharp and that gives me an elevate this and a very small contact point. It's a cheap and easy way to um, do large flat surfaces like this. I've got a box full of them. I just made as many as I needed for a bigger project. Um, this just has about four on it and when it's done, it's flip it over on the other side. Okay, we are done uh, with the staining. That's how it turns out. This needs to dry for probably most of the day. It's still August and it's pretty warm, so it should be a, you got a little bit of blotchiness. It shows up more on camera than it does in person. Uh, overall, I think it looks pretty good. There's a few spots here where I used some wood filler and I didn't get it sanded all the way off. What I'm going to do with these spots is I have some dark gel stain that I'm going to go and just kind of touch this up once it's dry and that will hide these light spots a little better. And then whenever everything's dry, just wipe on poly. Um, you just wipe it on just like you do stain, let it dry for a couple hours. Um, I like to hit it with about uh, 400 grit sandpaper, do a second coat, and you're done. Now it's time to put the lid on my box. What I'm going to do is just get it lined up, and then just tape the lid on. This will help me make sure I get everything lined up well. Uh, my little combination square. I've decided that I'm just going to place these about three inches in. Line up the screw holes. I just took the beam out of my combination square and that helps me get a straight edge. Just center this by eye. All right. Install the lock holder. That's going to go about right there. This is the hardest thing to mark 
what I found out. Just take your pocket knife, and if you're very careful, you can make two little marks that you can see. But once you actually install this, you won't be able to see. And we're done. This is how you make an ammo box. One piece of pine, two dollars and some hinges, and some black handles for about thirty dollars and a few hours of labor. You get a really nice tote that you can use for a toolbox, you can use it for an ammo box, you can use it at the store. A whole bunch of different things, it makes great gifts. Uh, it's one of those things that I would like to sell, but with about four hours of labor into it, I have to charge about $100 for this. I don't see that selling, but I don't know. I might try putting this on my Etsy store and see what happens. Um, you can cut a stencil, like I did on the first box, and just put your name or your friend's name or a client's name right on the top. 